Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order and thank Longus for hosting our meeting tonight. If everyone would please join me in a moment of silence at this time. Thank you. We have a couple of students going to lead us in the pledge tonight. We have Mr. Austin Walker and Lily Cheney. Austin. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. Great job. We're down to approving the minutes of the prior board meeting. Board members, you've had a chance to review the meeting minutes. Are there any changes that need to be made or additions? I make a motion. A motion by Mr. Johar, second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of approving the prior meeting minutes, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Approving the agenda. I need a motion to approve the agenda unless someone has any additions. I make a motion. Motion by Ms. Wells. Second. second by Mr. Johar. All in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. And recognitions, Ms. Embry. Hey, hi. There you are. Um, I don't know if I have to get to the podium. I'm going to let Ms. Kitty get there. Um, tonight, we're going to be treated uh, with Cedar West um, recipients who won first, second, or third place. We've got several students and some proud uh, family members here to celebrate what they've accomplished. So Ms. Kitty's going to share that with you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> good evening, Chairman Rager and board members. Uh, the teachers in the Muhlenberg County School System are very fortunate to have the opportunity to apply for Cedar Grants through Cedar West Incorporated. And grant money received covers the majority of the expenses if they'll do a unit. And any teacher in our district may apply for the grant. And they're based on the number of teachers who apply for the grant in Muhlenberg, Hopkins, Union, and Webster Counties. So individ individual teacher amounts are based on the uh, supplies that are needed and the depth of the unit that the teachers will be doing. So this year, Muhlenberg County had 35 teachers apply for the Cedar Grant and they all received their grants. Uh, the awards ranged from $123.50 to $1,000 a teacher, with Muhlenberg County being awarded a total of $11,844.50 this year. Because teachers applied for the grant, 930 students in our school system learned more about coal and uh, coal production. So in addition to receiving the grant, teachers had the opportunity to win prize money for their coal units of study, and then students could enter projects in to be judged and win prizes also. There was also a t-shirt contest, and uh, one of our students in Millburg County won the t-shirt contest, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, if you were a winner and you were a student, you won $100 for first place, $50 for second place, and $25 for third place. If you were a teacher, you won, you could win $300 for your unit for first place, $200 for second place, and then you get $100 for third place. And we had several winners in Millburg, as you can tell. So Millburg County brought home $2,725 in prize money this year, which is out Standing, so we got a lot of Cedar Grant money this year. So Cedar West Incorporated will also fully fund a, a field trip to the coal fair, and we had one place take advantage of that this year, which was the Renaissance Center. So at this time, we'd like to recognize the students and the teachers that won prize money for their projects and units of study. Uh, if the students are in attendance tonight, we'd like you to, to take your project up and let the board members see it, okay, and let them see what you did. So we'll start with science, first place. Um, Axel Ferris from Bremen, uh, he won first place in the K-2 category for science. Is he here tonight? 
Okay, first place in the 9-12 category for science was Donyan Mohan from the Renaissance Center. Is Donyan here? No. All right, second place uh, was 9 through 12 in that category was Dakota Failing from the Renaissance Center. So we had three winners in science. We're very proud of that. Then in art, um, art we have second place for the K2 division was Marcus Davis from Bremen, Kentucky. And I think Marcus is here tonight. He is. <laughs> Marcus has shown you his model of TVA. She did a great job with his model of TVA. It even lights up, wow. which is great. It's great. Then we have third place in the art category. In the K2 category is Kaylin Knopfsinger from Bremen, Kentucky. Is she here? Bremen Elementary? No? Okay. Then second place in the 6 8 category is Cameron Studeville. Is Cameron here? Okay, Cameron. Studies Project. Is he here? No. no. Okay. And then we have first place in the art contest in the 912 category was Forrest Revlet. This piece is over here. This piece is over here. You'll have to check the table out for his. Third place in the 912 category was Abigail Brooks in the area of arts from the Renaissance Center. Nope. All right, music. We had two music winners this year. First place, our first first place winner I'm going to tell you about was from uh, the Renaissance Center, and she won in the 6 8 category, and we have a little video clip for you to see. Okay. I just got a report from this. One of the janitors, there's a white explorer uh, forward with the door open. And, and I know you guys drive that. I've sent Austin to see. Do you have your keys? Yeah. Okay, so we're good if he shuts it? And, yeah. Okay. I'm sure you don't need this. Sorry about that. We were going to have a video clip for you, but sometimes those things just don't work out. Uh, we also have in the first place category in music in the K2 division was Bristol Vincent from Bremen. Her parents are Amber and Clay Vincent, and she is going to play her song and perform it for you. She's going to sing and play. Thank you, Bristol, for being brave enough to do that for us. Bristol Vincent and I'll be playing my cold song is called Cold is Cool and it is to the tune of Broken Halos by Chris Stapleton.
was great, Bristol. And you know, I think I need you to give me guitar lessons, okay? Sometimes <laughs> we do that. Uh, her proud grandmother, Donna Vincent's here. It's good to see Donna at a board meeting again. And then, of course, her Aunt Gail is back there, Johnson. Uh, so, uh, math category, second place in the 3 5 category was Morgan Higgins from Greenville. So Morgan Higgins. Okay. First place, 6 through 8, Abigail Moore at the Renaissance Center. Then going to mathematics, <clears throat> second place in the 3 5. Oh, I said that one, never mind. English language arts, first place, K through 2, was Sophie Durow from Bremen. And I know she's here tonight. Her parents are John and Darla Durow. I'm Sophie Durham, and my book is called Co Project Conferences. Colin, Jen, Becky, and Avery were walking home from school. They, they were going to Jen's house to work on a project about coal. While they were unpacking their backpacks in Jen's attic, Avery asked, What are you going to do for your project? Well, said Jen, I'm going to write about our trip to the coal mine. I'm going to share information about jobs in coal, said Becky. I'm going to show the many uses of coal, said Colin. Good, said Avery. I'm going to, I'm going to do an art project. Avery started to sketch a draw, out a drawing for his project. Colin searched the internet for uses of, for uses of coal. Hey guys, did you know that coal is used to make electricity? What would it be like if we didn't have electricity? Becky said. I couldn't live without my television or my cell phone. Becky was next to use a computer. She looked she looked up information about jobs in coal. She found that there were many uses that that were, were many many jobs related to coal. And that and that coal helps the community. Coal miner power plant operator and truck drivers are some of the jobs in coal that she knew her friend's parents had. Hey, my, my dad used to be a coal miner, said Avery. Colin added, my, my uncle drives the, a coal truck. Did you know that trains are used to carry coal from different places? Ex exclaimed Becky. The next day, their class went on a field trip to the coal mine. They saw the car, coal car that is used to load the car from the mine. They watched the grinding mill grind coal. They saw lots of equipment moving coal. Then Jen took a lot of notes for her report. After school, the friends went back to Jen's house to work to work on their projects. Avery was almost finished drawing a coal miner. His picture included a hard hat with a light with a, with a light, a pickaxe, and a in boots. They entered their projects at school. The teacher chose the best ones. Jim's report was the f on the coal mine, won first place. Second was Avery, Colin won third, and Becky came in fourth. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Then we had a third place in the K2 category in uh, language arts was Riley Uzzle from Breeden. Is Riley here? Okay. Then in the technology media area, first place we had in the K2 category was Reed Gatton from Bremen. Hi, Reed. Do you have something you wanted to share, share with the board members? <laughs> <laughs> well, stand up and let's clap for you, Reed, then. Okay. Second place, K2, was uh, Jude Gardner at Bremen. Did you have something you wanted to share, Jude? This is an interview with my papa Rick, a retired coal miner, about my family's history of working in the coal mines. Coal mining in the early 1900s was hard work. Back then, coal mines were different. I'm not 
talking just a few years ago. I'm talking about my grandfather's grandfather. He went to work in the coal mines when he was just 12 years old. He went to he went to work to help feed his family. He worked with his dad. He had to do the same work as the grown men. Back then, they would drill holes and shoot out the coal with dynamite. The next day, they would come back and shovel up the coal and pick it loose. He probably had a hard time in that mine with just a pickaxe and shovel. He would swing the pickaxe all day. He would use that shovel to scoop up the coal into a box on wheels. Those boxes were pull pulled by mules. He also had a special tag with his number called a flicker that he put on the box. He was paid only for the coal he got out. He would, he would get paid by the ton. They didn't pay much for coal then. He was paid with tokens that were only good at the com company store. The coins were called script. The script was like Monopoly money. You could only spend it at uh, the company store. Everything he bought came from this company store, like groceries, clothes, beds, fridges, everything. Sometimes the company would put things on his bill that he did not get. <laughs> <laughs> they do not do. <laughs> He worked in the mine until he was hurt in a fire, uh, hurt fighting a fire in the mine. What? Uh, he worked as a miner his whole life. He became a foreman or a boss of a mine. He worked in the mine until he was hurt fighting a fire in the mine. My papa followed in his grandfather's coal mining footsteps. He became a coal miner too. He worked for 34 years in the coal mines. Coal mining is important to me because it gave people in my family great jobs. Thank you, Jude. That was great. And I knew they had a rich history in coal mining, just like my family does. Um, then we had first place in the 912 category was Hannah Everett from the Renaissance Center. Is Hannah here? Okay. Hannah is here. Okay. Hannah. Did you want to show them your project? You emailed it. Okay. That's the PowerPoint. Okay, Miss Sherry. Sherry's going to just flip through some of the slides and show you some of the work that Hannah did for her project. No. This one. Uh oh, wrong one. Uh oh. And I don't think we can hear I think this is Ethan's, and Ethan was the next one up. And uh, second place, 9 through 12, was Ethan Camplin's from the Renaissance Center. I don't know what happened there, Hannah. If you just click the a few of the slides and let me see what it looks like. So they've done a lot of hard work, the kids have. As you can tell, uh, they've got some fantastic projects, and we're really proud of them. You can see why that they won some prize money for the things that they did. They represented Muhlenberg County Schools really well. Mm -hmm. While she's continuing to go through that, the t-shirt design contest winner was Kane Vault. Has Kane here tonight? So Kane, would you hold up one of the shirts and show them? This is what the shirt looked like that Kane designed, and this shirt went to all the counties, like Union, mm -hmm. uh, Webster, all the kids, Muhlenberg. If they entered a project, they got this, sh this shirt right here, and the teachers that entered also. And then also the teacher uh, co-winners this year, Emily Gardner, got first place. You've seen her notebook up there. First place for her notebook and her unit. And then Megan Brandon, second place at Bremen. At, at the middle school, high school levels, we had uh, Ryan Groves got first place for his from the Renaissance Center. Hayes Browning, second place for his at the Renaissance Center. Beth Ellis, second place. And Kelly Melton, third. So we're very proud of all the work that the teachers and the kids have done in Muhlenberg mm -hmm. County. Thank you. Those students who had problems in the hallway, I'd love to take your pictures. Oh, oh, we get a shirt. Thank you. You did great. Good job, Mom. First of all, good job. Nice job. That's awesome. That's I like the way you do it. 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 I like the way
lost our crowd. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on down to Treasurer's Report, Mr. Blitzinger. He has a graduate tonight, so we're going to hurry him up. Thank you, Chairman Rager, distinguished board members. Uh, tonight I'm bringing you the financials as of April 30th, 2008. Some of the revenues this, this month, uh, our beginning balance was down by about 824000 and it was at $22,779,000. Uh, revenues this month were about $2.64 million for total monthly receipts of $25.424 million. Expenditures. Our accounts payable uh, this month it was $892,758. Uh, it's it's a it's a uh, let me try that again. I apologize. It's up approximately $40,000 from April of last year, and these are mainly general fund expenses this time. Uh, the uh, we had some debt service of $144,000. General fund uh, expenses were 590000 and food service 157000 uh, And the significant bills were the 145000 paid to Old National Wealth Management. Uh, about 40000 was paid to NWEA, which is testing software. And 39000 was paid to Kisbit, which is our unemployment insurance. Our payroll was about $2.651 million. It's down about 28000 versus last month. However, it's up by 18000 versus uh, the same period last year. And overall, expenses are up about 98000 this this month. For the payroll, uh, the gross pay this month was about $2.83 million. Uh, employee deduction is 792000 for a net pay of about $1.59 million. The tax of 383000 was spent. Uh, paid this month, a KTRS payments of $292,616, CERS payments $152,000, insurance about $94,613, and other payments of $136,000, almost $137,000 for a total of, again, the $2.651 million. Uh, the accounts payable breakdown. Uh, from this month, uh, other fixed mix expenses accounted for about almost 60 percent, which is about 524,000. Utility expenses were 14 percent, uh, almost 125,000, and variable expenses were 27 percent, uh, for 243,000. So for that breakdown, the total accounts payable of $892,758. Of that, $519,282 was general fund. Special revenue was seventy-one thousand. Debt service almost one hundred forty-five thousand, and food service and daycare was about one hundred fifty-seven thousand. So the ledger balance at the close of the month uh, was about twenty-one point eight eight million. Uh, the bank balance was fourteen point one million. Outstanding checks of seven hundred fifty-five thousand, and cash at the close of the month was about thirteen point three six million. Of that $13.36 million, the breakdown is as follows. Uh, general fund was about $13.7 million. That's down about $630,000 from the previous month. Uh, special revenue, it's showing a negative balance. That was a timing issue with the uh, federal cash request. Construction is still at $989,000 with no change. Debt service grew by about the $145,000. Food service is at 275000 down about 3000 from the previous month. Uh, daycare is at 79000 and community education is at, remains unchanged at $284, and investments also remain unchanged for the $21.8 million. Extended financial picture. The cash flow needs through September, these are estimates. Uh, we expect that... At the, in September, the balance will be about $8.818 million, which then the next month, uh, October, will go down a little bit more, and then November is when usually when we get tax payments and they'll go up. Questions? Any questions? 
I need a motion to approve the treasurer's report. Mr. Byers made a motion. I'll second. All in favor of approving the treasurer's report, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Payments of bills and salaries, Mr. Blitzing. Thank you again. Uh, this month I bring a relatively small amount, uh, 171000 uh, Of that, 115000 was general fund. Fund 2 was about 55000 and food service daycare was $202. Uh, utilities expenses accounted for 31% of that. Uh, fixed costs were 16% and variable expenses were about 53%. Significant uh, payments this month were to Hatch Software, which was, uh, was $12,300, which was, again, software. And then there was a, a payment of about $9,100 to Houghton Mifflin for textbooks. Motion to pay bills and salaries. Motion by Mr. Johar. Second. Second by Ms. Wells. All in favor of paying bills and salaries, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. And down to payment of school bills. I need a motion to pay the school bills. Motion by Mr. Johar. I'll second. All in favor of paying the school bills, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. And down to public participation, we have none tonight. So we'll go on down to the superintendent report, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Chairman Rager, uh, board members. I have a few things before we turn it over to the principals. Uh, I want to say how proud I am of the kids. I know they're gone now. I didn't get to say it while they were here. But I love watching their parents and their grandparents. I think they're proud, too. I'm just kind of reading faces. But uh, our kids are awesome, and I see that all the time in the school. So uh, that's just uh, a sampling of, of what we have in our county. I also want to quickly mention testing. The window has closed, all but maybe some makeups. I think we're pretty much finished with that. Some principals may talk about that. Uh, very pleased with what I've heard about the effort. Uh, typical good effort and attendance throughout it as well. So I anticipate us doing well with the testing. I want to talk about a training we're going to have on May 31st. Some of you may want to, uh, I know Mr. Bowers has been involved in all the planning of this, but we've had three meetings and I think it's important for the community to know uh, how this has worked. We've had 50 people, uh, first, first responders, law enforcement, uh, central dispatch, you name it, ambulance service, we've all come together and talked about how we can make our schools safer, what we can do differently and better. And we're going to have a fourth meeting tomorrow. And what we're working on now is a training, an active shooter training at East Campus on May 31st. It'll be sometime between 8 and 8.30, and it's going to be pretty extensive. All, all branches will be involved, all first responders, maybe closing some roads for just a little bit. So we're going to really have to do a good job of getting the word out there, tell folks what's getting ready to happen. And we're going to go through it again pretty extensively, and I'm quite sure we won't be as prepared as we think and hope we are, uh, but we'll learn. And so uh, our goal is over time to continue to rotate and do this at each campus over time and continue to get better and better and better. And I will say this, uh, Denny Vincent has been in each of the meetings. He's from the Kentucky Center for School Safety. And he told me on the way out that we are one of, he's been across the state, that we are one of the top three in the state that he has attended and as far as people working together. State police to local police to ambulance service, everybody there is asking the same questions. What can we do better to keep our kids safe and our staff safe? So I was proud to hear that, but again, that's May 31st. We'll have it in the papers. We'll have it uh, out on all call, one call, Facebook and all, so our public will know what's going to happen. Uh, that'll be the morning of May 31st, and we will certainly report back to you on how that goes. We'll do a quick safety report overall. That's one of the things, but a few things that we're doing in our schools with the, you know, some of the issues we've had this year, obviously. One of the things that we have now installed, and I talked about this a little bit, the panic buttons at East and West Campus. We're going to start there and see how that goes. And I think, Miss Bumps, you are in here somewhere. If you don't care a little bit, because I know we did the first drill, first try on at West Campus yesterday, I believe. So would you talk about that just a little bit? Absolutely. So uh, thank you, Mr. Davis. Um, we did do the uh, first round of the drill and train out the panic button. Um, we were pleased with the sound of the button. It was a little low, but at the same time, um, we did find out that we needed to lengthen um, the sound uh, because of the beginning, it was pretty short. So we felt like that it didn't give us enough time to be able to make sure that the kids understood what was going on as well as the staff members. 
uh, but once this tone did go off, um, all the students and the staff members did what they were to do. The call did go to dispatch, however, it was a hang-up call. So after school yesterday, I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Wells, he came back over. Uh, we were able to go ahead and test that sound again, lengthen it out, and then dispatch was able to get the phone call and actually we were recording. So we will actually do our East Campus one day next week. We needed to get through AP testing uh, the rest of this week over there since that cannot be interrupted and we'll do that for around Monday or Wednesday of next week. Thank you, Ms. Bumps. And again, what that does, it's just like, you know, I always think of the bank clerk. Uh, you hit this and it calls 911 and simultaneously sits off an alarm, which signifies go to lockdown in the school. So uh, I'm, I'm really, really excited about this. And once we get the kinks worked out, we'll get into all the schools. That's the plan uh, before early next year. Also, one of the things we're, we're going to do is we're going to be changing out the exterior doors at the high school campuses, gym doors. They're, they're old. They don't close as well as we would like. And uh, that's it's it's not cheap, uh, but it needs to be done. It's, they're, I guess, almost 30 years old now. So we'll be making those changes. We're going to also uh, work on locking the gym doors at some campuses. You can't lock the interior gym doors. I'll use North Middle as an example. When you go in and before you go into the gym, after you enter the, the building, you can't lock those doors. And we are going to make sure that at all the schools, the high school may be the exception because there's so many entrances, that you can lock kids in the gym and basically we want to say if there's an assembly going on and you have an active shooter or you have a lockdown situation you can pull those doors locked and essentially they will be locked down in the gym then so as of now some of the schools we can do it some we can't greenville elementary and north middle are two that we need to work on and, and uh, mr fleming is working on that we'll be adding hopefully uh, we'll be talking to you about this but uh, greenville has offered greenville city has offered to pick up half the cost of another SRO and, if, and we think that's going to happen much as Central City has done and so they're, they're willing to do this as well and that will allow us to have an SRO uh, or peace officer at each at, nor at West, at East at North Middle and at South Middle and our thinking is as of now we'd love to have another one but as of now if we can do that uh, the one at North Middle would have the feeder schools as well South Middle would have the feeder schools as well I think, we hope that will be in place at the beginning of next year. So uh, excited about that. I alluded to it a little bit earlier at, at a work session about uh, the front entrances. We have some problems at our front entrances. And in most of our schools, maybe half of our schools, you have to be buzzed in twice and then buzzed into the school. And that's what we want. At some of the schools, that's not the case. Uh, once you're buzzed in, you're in the school. Take South and Middle, for example. And so an architect went through with some of us uh, last week and we'll, we'll now be working up some things and we had some plans on what kind of costs we're looking at and then we'll deal with that. But we're wanting to get it, uh, those schools where you can just get buzzed in and then you go wherever you want. So we're working on that and again we'll report back to you on that. We're working on continuing to upgrade our camera systems a couple at a time, but that's uh, that's in the works. There'll be, a, I think, a couple done this summer, and we'll continue to rotate and do that. I've talked about the May 31st training. I'm very excited about that. Police presence in our schools has been up greatly since since the Marshall County. And, and I can't say enough how much I appreciate that. They, they come in, and the kids at first may have been like, what's going on, made them a little nervous, but once you're there a lot, it, it's a comfort thing. And I've heard so many positives over that, and, and this is from all departments. I just think if you see a police officer, thank them. They've gone above and beyond, even on off days. I know that they've been in our schools often. Now, we did offer to feed them if they would come. I think Wednesdays on Wings and Rings Day, uh, we maybe had a few more, and that's fine. Uh, we'll be glad to feed them if they'll come in. It just makes our kids feel better. And so, again, big props to them. Our police departments, uh, first, they have been ex exceptional. I will tell you, it hasn't happened yet. I anticipate next year there being a change in the way we do fire drills because that's led to some problems. Uh, some of our active shooters have used fire drills. Uh, we're likely to get something. I hope a st the state changes some things where it may be a situation where when you pull a fire drill, the first thing you do is go to lockdown and then make sure it's okay and then exit the building. But that's in the works kind of statewide, and I'll report back to you on when that happens. So that's... Um, 
that's my part of that. I have a couple more things. So I do want to tell you about my capstone. It's on June the 4th. I'll let you folks know. I think that's at noon on June the 4th where I have to kind of go through my year and tell you how I've tried to meet the standards I'm supposed to meet. I want to give a big shout out to Colonel Henry and the JROTC at the high school. Miss Bumps, I really appreciate her, appreciate her inviting me the other day. Prom, I'm not prom. That was a big one too. Graduation is next Friday. And I went and I got to listen, sit on a meeting, and got to listen to the JROTC, the kids, not the adults. They went through the entire process of how they're going to do the parking. Whether it be inside if there's bad weather or outside if there's good weather, they went through all the logistics. And I'm telling you, I couldn't be proud. I wish you could have sat through that. You're talking about 11th and 12th graders and, and going through this process. <laughs> Extremely impressed. So uh, JROTC, great job. At the, if you see Colonel Henry, his staff, there were police there, and you've got kids, juniors and seniors, up <laughs> presenting to everyone. And they may have been a little nervous, but they nailed it. And so it's going to go well, and I'm super proud of them. As we come to a close at the end of my first year and end of our school year, and it's been a rather interesting one, I'll go into that a little more during my capstone project. I really want to thank some folks really quickly. Our community, our parents, our law enforcement, first responders, and you guys, the board, through some tough times, be it pension, uh, be it the safety stuff, be it black ice, whatever it may be, They've been behind us, and we felt it, and I, I very much appreciate it. And I appreciate through the tough times. Uh, a lot of communities have split, especially through some of the pension stuff. I think Muhlenberg has pretty much stayed together, and I couldn't be prouder of that and more more appreciative of that. So that's my part of this. I'm going to turn it over to everybody's favorite part, typically, which are the principals. And they're going to tell you what's going on in their schools and probably talk about some kids. So we'll, we'll start with Bremen. Mr. Sharp. First of all, I want to thank you. I'm, I'm very thankful for our students and teachers that participated in the Cedar West uh, Old Grant. I'm trying to get one of them to stay and do my part here. They, just, they said no. So, uh, graduation is scheduled for tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, excited to send some fifth graders on. Uh, we just completed the K prep test. Um, testing system. Uh, I'm very proud of our students and teachers and their efforts during that. Uh, we're preparing for our graduates to come to our school tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, we're going to uh, line up in the hallways and they're going to go tour our school. And we found an old slideshow from when they were fifth graders. We're going to have that playing for them. Uh, I'm very proud of our teachers. They're working hard to go ahead and they're, they're in that mode. They're still finishing the year strong, but they're also trying to see what's going on next year, how to plan, and effectively get ready for next year. And so I always like to be prepared for what's coming around the corner. So I'm very proud of them for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sharp. Ms. Higgs from Central City. Uh, we too just finished testing. We were so excited because we got all makeups done yesterday. And boxes were delivered. So it's a big relief just to have those test papers out of the building. Um, um, at the end of April, on April 24th, we had a career fair. And all of our students dressed up using chosen gear. We had their career, uh, pictures professionally made as a souvenir for them. Uh, we had parents and community members come in during the day and present their careers, along with our fifth grade students who also presented to the younger students. And then uh, that night we had um, a night at the Career Wax Museum so the parents could come in and see the fifth graders present their projects as well. Um, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, so we tried to do a little something every day for our faculty and staff. On Monday, uh, all the faculty and staff received popcorn, and our theme was You Made This Place Pop. Tuesday, we gave out World's Finest Chocolate to the teachers because our crew is the finest. On Wednesday, the district supplied donuts for our crew, and our theme that day was We Don't Know What We Do Without You. Thursday, they got a DQ ice cream treat, and our theme that day was You're So Awesome, It's Ridiculous. And Friday um, was Celebrate, and each faculty and staff member received the CCES bag chair. So uh, it really set the tone for a good week, as well as for testing, kind of relieve some of that pressure on testing. Uh, we do have fifth grade graduation Monday night at 6 p.m. at Phillips Martin Hall. And 
January by this dad, and then we're finishing up the year with a project called Only One You Project. Our PTO has purchased rocks for each student, and it goes along with the story, Only One You by Linda Krantz. And it's about a fish named Adri who's going to follow the advice of his parents, their words of wisdom, like find your way, you don't have to be part of the crowd, and each student will paint their own rock, will seal it, and then it'll become part of our landscaping. That's kind of what we have going on as you said. Thank you, Miss Higgs. I believe Greenville kids, and including their son, are graduating tonight at Greenville. And Mr. Brown, you're here in Miss Jones' place, is that correct? That, that is correct, sir. She gave me a list. She said it's short and sweet like she is, so we'll see if it is. Uh, she starts out on Tuesday, May the 8th, Mustang baseball team and Coach Ruggles came to GES uh, G for our K prep kickoff. They did a great job engaging the kids, interacting with them. The kids just absolutely loved it. And then after that, we did enter into the test, and they worked hard on the test. The kids did. Uh, the mobile science truck was uh, at our school April the 24th through the 26th. Students enjoyed learning about agriculture, making lip balm and glue, whatever that is. And we just want to say thank you for that. That was board uh, provided, and we appreciate that. Our archery team, this is great, competed at the national competition in Louisville on May the 11th. And we're proud of them. They qualified for the world competition, which will be coming up shortly. Our junior beta scholarship is being presented uh, to a high school senior, Adam Kelton. Adam is the son of Johnny and Lori Kelton of Greenville, Kentucky. And and while their kids were at Greenville Elementary, they were great supporters of our school, always volunteering to help. So we really appreciate the Kelton family. Another student recognition, Reagan Stovall, fifth grader, daughter of uh, Eric and, and Allison Stovall, won the Greenville uh, Women's Club essay contest. We're proud of Reagan. Um, another student, Catherine Kidd, daughter of Jason and Ona Lee Kidd, received her first place in junior health division, and she'll be advancing to the uh, Kentucky State 4-H competition in July. And our last big event of the year will be our talent show on May the 29th. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing all the talents uh, that our students will provide, and that will start around 9 a.m. If you're not doing anything, just come on down to Greenville a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Browning. Thank you. And I must say, like the kids who went earlier, Miss Browning was just smiling, just so proud of you as you were there. <laughs> as she always is. I just, I just noticed that. You thought I was like, Whoa. Uh, Mr. Hardison, first, thank you for hosting us tonight. And I'm sure you've got some things you want to talk about as well. A couple things. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you, board members. Uh, first of all, I want to, again, say... Uh, Great job by Mr. Austin Walker. Uh, he's uh, He joins me each morning. He's the voice of longest. He gets our day started here. He always does a great job. So you can tell from his you know his participation tonight that he does a great job, and, and he's going to be missed. I uh, do want to brag on our staff and our students. Uh, these teachers from other schools, that, or these principals from other schools have talked about uh, Cape Rep test. It's been an exciting couple weeks here, a week here with uh, uh, Cape Rep going on. We've had a lot of staff participation uh, to get our kids excited. And it's, uh, I think, Miss Armour, you and 29 teachers, is that what it was? Uh, put together a glow dance thanks to our uh, chore choreographing of. Uh, uh, Miss Caitlin Berry, our, dan our music teacher, uh, it was pretty exciting. And we went to a lot of effort. We had help from the maintenance department to get our gym ready, and we sure appreciate that. But uh, the glow dance went quite well. Uh, if you want to go to our Facebook page and check out that video, it's uh, pretty entertaining, and uh, the kids loved it. Uh, I do want to send a shout out to our spring, our uh, our Spartan singers. They have their spring chorus concert tonight at seven o'clock in our gym. You're more than welcome to join us and uh, stop in there and see see them. They've been out in the community this afternoon on tour, visiting some uh, rest homes and uh, different areas. They went to the board this morning after they did their school performance, and uh, we appreciate Mr. Davis and the staff over Great. there that, that welcomed them there, and they always are very proud to show off their singing skills, but uh, very excited there. I want to send a shout-out to uh, Caden Nixon. He won our spelling bee recently. Uh, I want to send a shout out to Miss Bumps. She has uh, she's allowed her students. We've had multiple groups into our building this year, and. Um they get the baseball team come in and read to some of our, our little kiddos. Uh, one of the days in our Cape Prep kickoff, your cheerleading squad came in, and uh, they got us going on Friday. 
uh, we've had a number of high school students and middle school students recently come in and read to some of the second graders and third graders and, and first graders. So we're really excited about the participation from the high school and middle school. So we're really excited there. I couldn't finish tonight without uh, giving you a little bit of a, a fun snippet, if we can get the technology to work. One of the days, the activities we had, Miss Caitlin Berry and Ann McGill, Lauren Bender, uh, if you've ever, ever seen a kid snippet, uh, they put together with the help of four kindergartners. <laughs> Ashley Mapri was the teacher, voice. Uh, Bristol Wilcox was a student, Gavin Stanley student, and Wyatt Franklin was the student. The students wrote this skit totally. They voiced the skit, but the staff people acted out the skit. And if we can get this, we're going to show you about half of it. It is well worth the minute or so we give you. What's wrong with the other half? Just time. Just time. Oh, we, can go, we can go if we want to. <laughs> and if you want to see the whole thing, you can go on our website. No. And it's, 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 so hopefully we can get this one. Not going to work for us. We'll give it a we'll give it a try. Well, I will tell you where to find it. If you go to uh, Mulan, uh, let's let's give it a try. Make sure the volume's up. The volume's going to make it. We, we did some kind of activity each of our days. I, I forgot. I need to send a shout out. I got a couple guys in the back. They're part of our Cape Rep Man Band. They performed on our fourth day. Uh, Kenny Crick, Gary Williams, big performers of our Cape Rep Band. Uh, Kenny's the man with the moves on, on the drums, I'm telling you. Uh, Gary with the vocals and the air guitar, we, were, we, were, we had a lot of fun with it. But... Uh, well, I tell you, this doesn't seem like it's going to work, but what I want to tell you, if you go to our website, go under the link, uh, teacher link, and it's LES News, and you're going to see a couple of different things. We post our, our news there, uh, weekly news, but you're going to see this, and you're going to see our year in review, so that's worth five minutes to watch. It'll, it'll definitely be worth a laugh. Oh, thank you, Mr. All right, thank you, Mr. Hardison. Mr. Wells, South Elementary. Mr. Wells, I'm sorry. Our Christmas program. Thank goodness I don't have to follow that. Christmas. Up there. Uh, do what? Oh, sorry, not the Christmas program. It's music program. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little late for Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we are kind of huh? a little late for a lot of things. But <laughs> oh, boy, she's doing a little late. All right. Uh, we have Quinn Fleming. He qualified for state 4-H demonstrations. Uh, we also wrapped up testing this week, like everybody else, and we had uh, competitions in the gym. We had bubblegum blowing, Simon Says, uh, dancing and relays. Our fifth grade will be visiting the Battle of Sacramento. Third grade will be visiting the uh, Convention Center Spray Park, hopefully, it was that rain. Uh, we'll celebrate the last day of school with turtle races, uh, and also recognition of students for perfect and near-perfect attendance. Uh, he also wants to uh, say thank you to local restaurants and businesses for donating items to our students for perfect and near perfect attendance. And also wants to thank Ms. Bunce for allowing the seniors to come over to have a very special moment this week. Thank, thank you. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rager, North Middle. Our uh, North Middle archery team uh, went to the uh, National Archery Tournament and placed 41st out of 255. So we're really proud of them uh, for that accomplishment. They'll advance to the Wolves uh, as well. Uh, yesterday we got a uh, survival visit, uh, two raccoons from uh, Channel 13. Uh, we actually uh, won the grand prize in Poppy's Field Trip that's sponsored by Florida Templeton Stewart and uh, Channel 13. And actually, uh, uh, Ms. Templeton Stewart was actually uh, present to present us with some checks. We got a thousand dollars donated to the band program, a thousand dollar check for the course program, and five hundred dollars to Betty Club. So, we're, like I said, we're really thrilled uh, uh, with that. And uh, uh, the students, it was a surprise uh, to everyone whenever, whenever they came up. And, and like I said, everybody that participated in the Poppy's Field Trip 
was in it, so I, there was probably a, over 100 schools or something, probably in, the, in Grandpa's drawing, because they had done it three years or so throughout the, throughout the year. Uh, also, uh, we're going to have a fair graduation, and if I do that, there will be at West Campus uh, at 7 o'clock on uh, May 24th. I do want to thank Ms. Bums. This is the third year for her hospitality. Uh, it's, it's awesome. Uh, um, we get to use the, the, the gym facility, and all the teachers are telling me how great it is that there's air conditioning in the gym versus what used to be done in the North Middle. So, in the past, uh, May 25th will be Rewards Day, and May uh, 29th, I'm uh, going to still play out Mr. Wild's uh, playbook. We're going to go to school make over day. I kind of let him pop that last year. He said it was a success. So I was going to wait and see how that turned out for him. But we're, we're going we're gonna to try that on the 29th. Thank you. Mr. Lau, rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> I let him know this morning. Uh, for us, April 26th was our last Thank You Thursday for the year. We had all of the South Middle School retired staff who have ever retired from South Middle since 1990. We were able to go back and be able to locate some of those individuals, welcome them back. It's the second year that we've been able to do that. Uh, it's a great day because you see people get to see each other. It's almost like a big family reunion uh, that they haven't got to see in a while and a lot of smiles and a lot of happy people being able to see each other again. On May the 4th, uh, we had a student that approached me about wanting to recognize our custodians. And I thought that spoke volumes of a young man. I uh, didn't really want his name mentioned, uh, which I think speaks volumes of him again, that he doesn't want any attention. But he did. He organized everything for that event. And that morning, we were able to surprise our custodians with a just a special recognition. It wasn't anything uh, large scale, just enough to say thank you for what you do. Uh, so very proud of that student. As everyone else has mentioned, pet prep testing did go well. And each afternoon of testing, we had some type of event for the students, just thanking them for their hard work. Uh, we had the Wolf Brothers uh, perform their reflection of the American spirit. We had Animal Tales. Mr. Sides, Jason Lindsay was there. We had our staff student basketball game. Uh, we won. Uh, the staff did. I, I was refereeing, so I don't know if that had part to do with it. Uh, I did so without my glasses that day. So, uh, yeah. But then to wrap it up, we had repercussion. If you're familiar with Stomp, the ones who make the music out of trash cans and buckets and all those type of things, uh, we had that that last day. I didn't know what that would be like, but it was it turned out real well. Kids really enjoyed it. I like that type of event because it gives students an opportunity to see something that they don't get to see every day. And so that was very special. Um, today, our SDOP group, they visited WKO, and they were on Midday Live today. So if you get a chance, go on that website, and you'll get to see them. I think they were at the very beginning of that today. And then tomorrow, as Mr. Rager mentioned, uh, our Extreme School Makeover. Weather permitting, tomorrow will be our second Extreme School Makeover, and a lot of students are very much looking forward to that event. It rains us out tomorrow. We've got a couple of days next week uh, for makeup days. That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lau. Ms. Bumps? Uh, yes, Mr. Davis, thank you, and uh, Chairman Rager and other board members. Uh, lots of things happening at the high school, as you've already heard. Um, uh, many shout outs given to me tonight, but I definitely want to give a big shout out to all the principals for working with the schedule as we begin our graduation tours. Um, the, the kids really enjoy that um, and thankful for a lot of the uh, head principals for um, not me always being on those trips because if it was anything like it was when I was at Longest, we would still be there taking pictures, but that's because the kids just was living in the moment. Um, and I do want to give a big shout out to Mr. Davis, Mr. Blett Singer, and Mr. Uh, Perkins. Uh, recently, Ms. Miller and uh, Ms. Carter in their science classes uh, were looking at ways to conserve energy, and they asked us to come in and score and judge some of those particular items. And so we were all able to take time out of our day and see some pretty neat presentations, the solar panels and things of that nature. And I believe at one time, Mr. Blett Singer was even calculating that up and see how that, that may look. So um, it, it was a great day by all. 
Um, we do have two students that will be competing at um, State Track this weekend, and that is Stephen Newman and Jonah Mitchell. Definitely want to give a shout out to Jonah Mitchell. Jonah is ranked 18th in the nation as far as running, uh, but he is regent champ and ran the 3200 meter, which is, uh, is over two miles, by the way, in nine minutes and 43 seconds. So he was uh, he was fast, uh, to say the least. Our bass team did compete at state last weekend. Um, we're Muhlenberg County is becoming very well known for our bass team, and out of 80 boats, we did place fifth. Didn't get to bring any hardware home, but hey, fifth out of 80 boats is pretty fantastic. As Mr. Davis mentioned already, uh, much of our safety conversations with the first responders has, have been happening at the uh, high school, so appreciate being having the opportunity to host that and continue to welcome all in as uh, well as the local law enforcement and our state troopers definitely have been very often and, and thank them for that. Uh, to date, we are at $1,977,276 in scholarships to date. Um, and that is not, uh, have, them, have all of them in, so we're continuing to add to that number and quite pleased with that. And as we transition to scholarships, we did have our hashtag college decision day, and that was through conjunction of Muhlenberg Achieves and Martin Foundation. That was a very fun event. I think Mr. Hardison was able to come that day. Um, and our seniors were uh, recognized and were able to take selfies with their various uh, college picture frames and uh, all were able to sign a banner that evening. Um, Mr. Davis mentioned our ROTC, and as we said earlier, our graduation tours. We had a group of students who uh, were at the junior leadership presentations. I believe uh, Miss Miss Wells, I, can't, I think you were there and um, received many emails and texts about the talent that Muhlenberg County has to offer, and um, very pleased with that. And how many of our kids that, even though they weren't awarded that particular uh, item, that many of them had gone out and listed a lot of those donations so they can make their project still happen. So we've been quite pleased with that. I uh, do want to invite the board members out Sunday. We have our art show from 2 to 4 p.m. in Martin Hall. And then also in the Commons area at West Campus, uh, we will have our Project Lead the Way STEM presentation. You'll be able to hear some of our students uh, hold that presentation that day. So again, that's from 2 to 4. There will be food at both events. So um, if you feed them, they will come. Um, and then, uh, as all have said earlier, we did have uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. I do want to thank all the staff members because it's not just about the certified staff. We definitely made our classified staff feel very... Uh, uh, very appreciated hopefully um, each day various things anything from uh, you're all that in a bag of chips or uh, where they were given chips that day or uh, thanks to you all this place would be a zoo or a circus so they were given animal crackers or circus crackers so um, anyway and that's about it other than graduation coming up and prom was a hit this year so thank you thank, thank you. you thank you what's the eight day forecast look like uh, chance of rain sir so it looks like it may be inside I'm taking the tickets home to stamp on this weekend I understand thank Thank you. Uh, Mr. Watkins from Renaissance. Uh, Ms. Ms. Roberts uh, stated earlier we had a, a lot of students, 11 students who placed in the cold fair. Um, and we also had four teachers who placed for a total of $1,625 is what our students and teachers brought home. And that's actually cash in your pocket. So um, it's always a big time for our kids. They really look forward to the cold fair and, and always been successful. Had a great trip that I talked about last month. Uh, and you saw the t-shirt that one of our kids designed that all the school districts that participated uh, were given. Um, the MOVE program, we have our students as of today completed 213 classes for a total of 171 and a half credits. And we will have 15 seniors from the MOVE program who will be walking across the stage next Friday night. So that is great. Um, on the ALC side of things, we've had 85 students throughout the school year in our building at some point. 35 students have exited, and 27 of those students have been successful in their transition back to their regular school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Do I have a representative from Job Corps? Not tonight. Okay, I think our next meeting is, is going to be at Job Corps. So that's something to remember. Okay, and that concludes my superintendent's report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Personnel actions, Ms. Browning. I have to say that I spent the majority of my career in high school. And two of my favorite days in high school, one was the graduation tour when they got to go back and see their teachers, and the other one was Happy Feet Day when they got their new shoes. So those are the, those are two great things that we have going. I have a lot of great things, but those are two that I remember. 
Uh, the personnel actions for April the 11th through May the 8th. We have uh, under the category of reassignment of certified personnel, there were two actions. Resignation of certified personnel, there were eight actions. Resignation of classified, three actions. Reassignment of classified personnel, there were 16 actions. Thank you. Attendance and enrollment of report, Mr. Freeman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. I um, have tonight the attendance report for the eighth month, which uh, was from March 22nd to April 24th. Um, we had a good month. Uh, we were closed at 94.14, which was up uh, 0.66 percentage points uh, compared to last year uh, ending the eighth month. We're up uh, a little over a tenth of a point uh, for the year compared to last year uh, as well as far as our attendance. Enrollment, we're currently at uh, 4,000, or I'm sorry, uh, as of the 24th of April, 4,580. Uh, that's down 135 from last year, uh, eighth month. <coughs> Uh, it's down 126 from the last day of school. Just keeping you sort of um, in, th in that direction. That's about 2.3 percent, um, which is a little below, the, I think, what uh, we projected. Uh, down uh, three students from last month. Uh, as of today, which is 17th of, of May, we are at 4,563. Um, we will have uh, ninth month does in uh, the 23rd, and we will have three days in our 10th month. Sometimes we have, depending on where we put our work days, but we'll have three days uh, in the final month. And so, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Move down to the board action items. At this time, we need to consider Martin Hall 2018-19 season contracts and budget. Mr. Manningham, he presented. Not here, but if you all have any questions, I've, I've got it. Mr. Basically, it's it's having approving the contracts, and Mr. Davis is the is the only one in the district that has signing authority on this contract. Is there any questions? I need a motion to consider. Mr. Johar. Second. Second by Ms. Wells. All in favor of considering the Martin Hall 18-19 season contracts and budget, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. <coughs> we move down to consider bidding DOT physicals for the 2018-19 school year. Ms. Browning. This is just pretty routine. We have to bid out the physicals for the Department of Transportation for this year, so we're just asking for board permission to, to uh, ask for those bids. Mr. Johar's made a motion. I will second. All in favor of considering bidding DOT fiscals for the 18-19 school year, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Move down to consider creating two part-time teaching positions at the Renaissance Center, one math and one science position. Each of these will be three days per week. Ms. Browning. That is uh, just uh, something we have done prior, and, and Alex is here if you have any specific questions, but uh, this is something that we have to put on the agenda every year to approve these positions. There's no change from last year. It's just the same thing that we did last year, but it needs approval, approval every year. I make the motion to consider the two positions. Second. Second by Ms. Wells. All in favor of considering the two part-time positions at the Renaissance Center, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Consider purchase of a maintenance van, Mr. Blitzinger. Thank you again, Chairman Rager. Uh, as I discussed on uh, Monday, the, the maintenance department, the current van that they have has about a, a little over 180,000 miles on it. Uh, the recommended van will cost about $26,000. Uh, we've found funds available in, uh, in the areas of vehicle repairs and maintenance, electronic repairs and maintenance, and fencing repairs and maintenance. Uh, those are all from the maintenance department funds. And uh, again, they coordinated with the bus garage to, uh, for a vehicle that would ha have the lowest, uh, would be the easiest to operate and, and the lowest maintenance costs. Thank you. Any questions? If not, I may need a motion to accept the recommendation. Motion by Mr. Johar. Second. Second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of considering the purchase of a maintenance van, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. 
consider approving school activity principles combining budget for fiscal year 2019. Mr. Blessing. You know, Red Book uh, dictates that the school activities principles combining budget be submitted to uh, in front of the board annually, and then uh, we are, as a finance officer, I'm required to submit that to you for your approval. Is there any questions? I'm going to need a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Wells. Second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of considering approving the school activity principles combining budget for fiscal year 2019 say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Yeah. Down to consider the 18-19 salary schedule, Mr. Blitzinger. Uh, thank you again. Uh, this year we bring to you a 2.5% increase to all staff across the board on, on salaries and, and base salaries. Uh, again, as we went over the each page, there were a few changes made where we moved items to ones where they moved them off of the miscellaneous page and put them on the classified grid when they should have where they should be. Uh, we, we removed uh, some positions that no one was receiving uh, on extra service. We removed a stipend uh, and however kept the, that line item just because those that position also has extended days. So that needs to remain on the salary schedule. Uh, other, otherwise there was no other changes. Make a motion. I'll second. All in favor of considering the 2018-19 salary schedule, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Chairman Rager, may I just comment just for a second? Because I want to thank some, some folks here. Uh, this is kind of a big day. Uh, it's been coming for, for a few years since we had the big cut back several years ago. And I want to thank the uh, our employees first for patience uh, and this year trust, I think. And, and they understood. We had to see what happened with the budget and the pension. And it's not like they were hounding us all the time. And I, I just, I, that's professionalism. And I respect that. I think that should be mentioned. And I want to thank the board because as we had our conversations, uh, Eric and I first talked about the potential uh, 2%. And the questions were basically, well, will that get us above or close? And it would have gotten us close. And to say, hey, let's do the 2.5% and get us above where we would have been. Uh, back in 2015, I think uh, the folks should know that, and that's where your hearts were, and that's where the conversations were. So uh, that's just my comments. Thank you. Thank you. And last is uh, consider the 2018-19 tentative budget. Mr. Blazinger. <coughs> Thank you again. Uh, again, this uh, our, the budget process is a three-phase process. We start with the draft budget, which builds the framework for the budget. The tentative budget goes in and then further refines that, adds some of the uh, restricted fund uh, categories. And then the working budget, which uh, comes in September, is the finalized budget that we, that we present to you. So tonight, again, I bring you the tentative budget. So budget considerations that we have, uh, again, always, 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 uh, first and foremost on my mind is long-term sustainability and any decisions that we present to you all to, that you make your decisions. Uh, also, we look at revenue increases over time, whether it be through, you know, seat dollars, uh, you know, uh, which they, you know, the bump, the small bump in the per pupil, however, you know, we also have to take into consideration the enrollment, those sorts of things. Also, tax revenue and those sorts of things. And attendance. And attendance. Because that really hits us whenever we don't have good attendance at these schools. That's correct. That really, really is something that we should focus on. And those, Making and the, sure the attendance is, is stronger than what it is. I mean, 91%. It's just not in right. And, and should be here anyways. Well, I mean, we talk would, about it as a source of revenue, but really the kiddos should be here. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, and that that is a good point to be made because as we do drop in enrollment, and that is absolutely a concern. We've talked about the the only way to make up for that is to is to have better attendance. And I do believe, Mr. Freeman, we are up for the year. Um, not as much as we like, but we are up. And I should note, this is a good time to note as well, that our staff attendance, as I mentioned at the work session, uh, we're running, uh, I think it's maybe 17% or, or more higher. That's about $140,000 thereabouts that we are in the plus compared to last year, which is something I know was a great concern last year. So do we need to still improve? Absolutely. Are we moving in the right direction? Absolutely. 
another consideration that, that hit us this year was uh, pension reform expense increases. Our CERS expense increase uh, was at estimated at approximately $120,000 this year, uh, which is less than we originally had anticipated, but it is still, it is still an increase. Uh, again, maintenance issues. We always have that uh, on our minds. Uh, that's why I have discussions with our maintenance department, uh, transportation, those sorts of things uh, to find out the state of our, our buildings, to find out what needs to be budgeted annually. <coughs> So uh, this year, the revenue line item changes uh, remain fa fairly similar to what was in the draft budget. You know, again, uh, I've, I've left it in there. Uh, it's the increase of property tax revenue of four percent. However, again, this is this is something that's voted on in August, September, and again, it's the the, uh, the pleasure of the board to, to vote on whether they would like that. So that's that's something to in the future. Uh, I, I decreased SEEK by about 3.45%, uh, which is a 4% predicted uh, ADA reduc reduction. Uh, just to, as a note, my models that I've, that I've built, uh, what I submitted, uh, or what I predicted on, the, on this was about $18.83 million. And what the state gave to us as our forecast was 18.93 million, which is less than a percent. So I, mean, I was I was very pleased with how that that turned out. Uh, again, I adjusted the on behalf amounts uh, that were proportionate to the salary. Those are the non-cash items. So <coughs> those are things that you know they increase, decrease, so whether uh, staffing level uh, and and salary levels. So uh, all funds. The, the revenues in these. I'll just go over these really quickly. Uh, a couple of them that, that have zero amounts. We still don't have some of those budgets plugged in just because we don't have certain allocations yet. So that's construction and daycare operations. Food service is at about 3.45, or excuse me, 3.42 million. Debt service is at 3.7 million. Uh, our bond payments this year are actually under $2 million, but the 3.7 uh, is a, it shows the board uh, the on behalf payments, the payments that the state makes on our behalf. Uh, I'm really pleased to, to say that our uh, building fund capital outlay and those funds will cover our debt service payments so there will be no there should be no fund transfers from fund one so that's a that's a really good thing uh, our building fund again is about 1.7 capital outlay uh, 400,000 and fund two is about 4.5 million and general fund is about 59.4 million for uh, total revenues this includes the beginning balance which has been growing which is uh, part of the reason why we can do what you, we just previously did and we thank you for that uh, so total revenues are about 69.5 million dollars of those, which is the, our biggest fund, is general fund. Again, local revenue is about 15.2 million. That includes our TVA funds and local taxes. Uh, state revenue, which includes our SEEK, is about 19 million. Uh, beginning balance is about 16.2 million. Miscellaneous revenue, which are just various uh, grants that we get, uh, is about 153,000. Those vary over the course of the year. Uh, Medicaid, uh, again, I've put about $200,000 in there. Uh, if, if we fall short of that this, this year, I'll adjust that down when I bring the working budget to you. And again, on behalf payments are about 8.4 million. Uh, so our SEEK was at about 18.9983 million again, which is a decrease of about 553,000 from the previous year. Question on your beginning balance at 16 million. Can that be found from June of last year? Is that where you're getting the 16? Because no, this is this no, is no, when no, we started. Yeah, I, yes, so I understand. We're, I understand. We're, what, that, what that is is that's what I predict the ending balance to be on the close of June 30th this year, which will then so be, a, be that rolled. That is a projection. That is correct. Okay, so that beginning balance in your pie chart, the 16 million, is not cannot be found anywhere because that's just a prediction that you're making. In terms of like, and we, well, I was just thinking if it's beginning balance, are we starting from last year's? No, this, to, this is this the, the beginning division. balance. Like uh -huh. so, when I for would, June of this year. For, for, for July 1st of this okay. year is what, okay. I, is what I expect. So last year, our net position changed about $4 million. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, it started out at, at $10 million. However, it grew to $14 million. This year, I predict that the net change will be about a little over $2 million. So it's so, just a projection. Thank you. It is. And they've been fairly accurate. 
So, uh, general fund expenditures, or excuse me, revenues. We had a, a local, re oh, I've already gone there, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, expense line item changes. Uh, again, we increased the salary expense by two and a half percent. And again, thank you all. Uh, and those those finalized values are in this. Uh, the only reason why that that little bullet point is on there is in case you all had said something differently. Uh, again, I budgeted two hundred thousand to vehicles and transportation. I've allocated funds for security cam cameras for both South Middle and East Campus. Uh, increased security services by about sixty-two thousand uh, for SROs uh, for the added cost of the SRO and the doors. And I reduced and reallocated any possible area in which uh, minimal spending does occur. So any time that you know the budget to actual was was far below, I tried to reduce that amount. So general fund expenditures. Uh, again, our contingency, uh, I have that at about 13.7 million. Uh, instruction is about 26 million. Student support service, about 1.5. Instructional staff service, 900,000. Uh, admin support is about 1.8 million. School admin support is about 2.6. Business support service, about 1.1 million. Plant operations and maintenance, about 7.28 million. Transportation is about 3.78 million. Uh, food service operation again. This is general fund out of the general fund is about thirty six thousand dollars, and those are for the lunchroom monitors basically. Uh, and again, community service of five hundred forty four thousand. Contingency. What percent is that? At the thirteen point seven million. That's about nineteen percent at this time. Nineteen percent. And again, the committed funds that we've discussed in the past, those are still in in that contingency balance however those will be reflected on the balance sheet once we do that do the end of the year close so again the committed funds we've uh, looked at uh, HVAC systems for East and West campus we're estimating about five million dollars per campus however I still I still have some meetings that we should uh, have with with our trained uh, counterparts uh, we have about 2.29 million in SFCC funds and about 2.71 million in uh, general funds uh, we've also looked at HVAC systems for South Middle uh, our maintenance estimates about five hundred thousand dollar cost for that and again retirement commitment our short-term liability uh, especially when we previously were looking at pension expenses was about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that was a short-term liability any questions? Thank you. Good to go, my man. All right. We need a motion to approve the tentative budget. Motion by Mr. Bowers. Second by Mr. Johar. All in favor of considering the 2018-19 tentative budget, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Chairman Erg, may I jump in just one more quick comment? Because I've been fairly uh, concerned and maybe somewhat negative about some things coming out of Frankfurt uh, all year long. But I do want to say a couple, give credit on a couple of things that have benefited us out of Frankfurt. And, and one is the unmined coal value, which, you know, we had a huge drop in that, as did in many counties, especially eastern Kentucky, where they just got, just got hammered with that. And that hurt us a lot. And we found out last week, I think, that we were going to get its one-time payment, but we're going to get ninety thousand uh, dollars that's a bill that passed which helps us greatly so we want to acknowledge that and seek funding is up nineteen dollars per student and at our current enrollment that's going to help us at about uh, eighty thousand plus uh, you know each year at least until that changes again uh, so at least over eighty thousand next year so those are a couple of things changes from frankfurt uh our legislature that we appreciate and we've already received the nine thousand as of tuesday Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay. We're down to the board consent agenda. Leave of absence request. Um, there's declaring four lunchroom tables, surplus for disposal that are at Central City Elementary, which are non-usable at this time. Accepting a $20,000 donation to Greenville Family Resource Center. Facilities use agreements, fundraising requests, and field trip requests. 
Right. Is there any questions regarding any of these on the consent agenda? If not, I need a motion to accept. I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Wells, second by Mr. Johar. All in favor of approving the board consent agenda items, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Johar, and I'll second. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none.